Well, hello, God bless you. Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, and I pray that you're having a God first day. I am as excited as I can be, and I'm coming to you again with my little uh, infomercial. Well, Brother Gary told me, stop calling it little. So our infomercial inviting you to Bible study. I mean, we cram a whole lot into these little few minutes that we get a chance to share with you, and mainly because we love you and we love Jesus more, more importantly. And there are so many things that are going on, my friends. And I thank God for an audience like you. I thank God for how you tune in, how you're praying for us, how you're standing firm on the word of God. And I want to encourage you as never before to know that you are wanted and needed in the kingdom. Our Lord said the harvest truly is plenteous and plentiful but the laborers are few. So therefore pray ye to the God of the harvest that he might send forth laborers to work in his harvest. And my friends, you are the laborers. I am the laborers that God is calling to work in his harvest in these last days. Now I want to read a passage of scripture to you right quick. I'm so excited. I'm talking fast because I don't want to talk to you all day. I want you to join me tonight for Bible study. But listen to this. Second Corinthians chapter number 10. Actually, chapter number 11 and verse 14 says, And no marvel, no wonder, Satan, for Satan has transformed himself into an angel of light. And what occasion Paul uh, making this statement, he says, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ, and no marvel, no wonder they operate just like their spiritual father, the devil, says Satan have transformed himself into an angel of light. Therefore, is it no great thing that his ministers be transformed as ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works. And I wish that I could speak to, oh, June Everett. June Everett is a, a, a lady in Pennsylvania. She's behind the, she's the national director for the After School Satan Club. June Everett is her name. Pray for her. June, she's, uh, as I said, the national uh, campaign director for the After School Satan Club at the Satanic Temple. And uh, in Salcom Valley, uh, uh, look at this, and she says that uh, in this Sarkham Valley, how about this middle school, middle school, they are having a uh, after school extracurricular uh, gathering is being launched where the people come to the after school Satan club. And uh, this is what the June Everett says about herself. She says, um, uh, that uh, she is your local, friendly, self-identified, non-theistic Satanist. And she goes on to say, kids love it. Talk about the after school program. Uh, uh, parents love it. And she says that this is the, the eighth one that they've launched. And, uh, and here's what she said. According to Everett, the Satan that Christians believe in is not the same Satan that the Satanic Temple believes, uh, that the Satanic Temple does. They claim they do not view Satan as evil or as trying to wreak havoc on communities and do terrible things. We look at Satan as a positive symbol, Everett said. That's the point. Satan has you fooled. There is, there is nothing positive about the devil. He's a liar. He was a liar from the beginning. He's defeated. Jesus said, I saw Satan fall as lightning from the sky. He has a date with the lake of fire where he will burn and be tormented forever. He's, listen, listen, anybody, anybody who is so deceived that they think that there's, there's a, that there's a Satan who is not the Satan 
that we learn about in the Bible, that there's a Satan who is good, that there's a Satan who is uh, kind, a Satan who is righteous. Oh my, if you think these things, you are greatly deceived. And Satan has done a great job uh, fooling you. He's a master of disguise. Satan can do, can disguise himself and look just like whatever your carnal, natural desires are. That's the way he tricks people. Satan never comes up to you in a way that's not appealing. Satan never, Satan never tempts you with things that you wouldn't uh, uh, desire or that you don't care for. Satan would never walk up to me and try to tempt me with a cigarette. I said this one time preaching. Satan's not going to say, go go buy a pack of this one or that one. I don't want to name any particular uh, uh, cigarette. Uh, but because the devil knows, I hate the smell of it. I always have. Uh, I, I, I can't stand being around it. But now there are other the things that I do like. I'm not going to tell you, but Satan would come and he would try to prevent, present himself in that manner so as to draw my attention. That's the way the devil does. Hey, June, you need to, you need to ask God to forgive you. You need to, you need to seek the Lord. You need to hear the gospel and we need to pray for Hillertown, uh, Pennsylvania. We need to pray for the kids in the middle school. We need to pray, uh, uh, for places where these satanic temples and satanic after school programs, and these satanic things are being erected. And if there's one in your town, there's one in your city. You got to pray about it. You can't just ignore it. You can't pretend that it's not there. That's one of the things Satan loves to do. He loves being an, uh, uh, ignored. I tell you, I tell you what we need. We need a uh, Wilmore, uh, Kentucky revival to take place there in Hellertown, uh, Pennsylvania. You know that great uh, Asbury revival, that marathon that's been taking place on the campus of Asbury University, a small Christian college where kids came together, young college students, and began to pray and to seek God. And there a move of God took place that have lasted over 10 days. And people have come from all over the country to be a part of of this prayer uh, marathon, they called it, in the Church of God in Christ. We call them shut-ins, a prayer marathon where people are praying and seeking God and preachers are preaching and people are coming from everywhere. Young folk are getting saved. People are being filled with the Spirit of God. Have your way, Lord. And I want to say to the people in Hillerton, uh, Pennsylvania, uh, uh, to the churches out there, um, uh, start, if you don't have one, start an after-school Chris, Christian uh, club. And when you get on, and when you get there, just begin to pray and seek the Lord and claim your campus for Jesus. I'm telling you, Jesus is more powerful than the devil and uh, he will deliver. Now, I'm, I'm excited, my friends, when I when I bring these things to you, they're not designed to worry you. We are warriors. We're warriors for Christ. And I want you to pray with me that God will deliver. Right quick, I'm almost down to my invite. I'm, down, I'm almost down to my ask. And so before I do give you what I want to ask you to do tonight, and you know I want to talk to you about Bible study. You know this is what it's all about. I want to read something that was given to me, uh, sent to me today. And the, the irony is, I was talking to a friend of mine, and they were saying, you know, Brother Wooden needs to lighten up. He, he was sharing with me some talk. He needs to lighten up. He needs to lighten up on his stand against LBGTQ. He needs to lighten up. Now, isn't it isn't amazing. And these th th these things were said from preachers. And I find it, uh, Gary, I just find it odd that I never hear these preachers saying that the LBGTQ plus and all the rest of the letters, that community needs to lighten up. Isn't it amazing where, that we live in a day where we will preach against the preacher <laughs> who preaches against sin, but we won't preach against sin. So today, uh, in this day and time in which we live, it's no longer a sin to be a homosexual or lesbian or transgender or anything like that. The new sin 
is speaking against it. And I'm, I'm, I'm enamored by the preachers and the people in the religious community who say, you know, wouldn't that talk about anything else but that. Apparently you don't listen. And also those who make those statements, I notice when you follow their ministry, they'll preach against anything. Nothing is wrong. Well, homosexuality is not the only sin, but what sin are you preaching against? Are you making, uh, you know, the, the new trick is to make poverty a sin. Oh, if you're in poverty, if you're in poverty, you are, you are beneath your privilege. You're living in sin. That's a lie from the pit of hell. What we need to do, we need to stand on the word of God and fight the battle. Fight Satan where Satan is fighting us. Satan is trying to destroy our nation. He's trying to destroy this country. He's coming in multiple ways. And the remedy... For all of these things is the gospel of Jesus Christ. I got a little note here I want to read, and then we're going to wrap this up. It is, and this was sent to me. I'm, I'm going to read it as it is written. I just want to even honor to you, uh, Bishop Wooden and First Lady Wooden, you and all uh, you are doing. You're doing a tangible job. I follow your page. I have been delivered through your ministry of homosexuality. I salute you and your wife for standing for God's truth. There are so many out there, out here, that's compromising their salvation and the platform that God gave them to destroy the enemy and his territory. I just want you all to keep doing what you are doing. Uh, uh, I Eyes haven't seen nor ears have heard uh, what's in store for the woman and the man of God. I just felt uh, led to leave you this message. I hope uh, you will. You are being blessed. Uh, and your blessings will continue. Uh, keep up. Uh, keep me and my family in prayer. And he gives his name from uh, the Wisconsin area. And this uh, individual has been delivered, set free and thankful. I was talking with my daughter the other day and they were sharing with me. Uh, 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 they were out uh, in California and uh, uh, it was either California or it may have been Denver. God is just moving there, going here and there, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I'm so proud of uh, what God is doing uh, uh, in the ministry and uh, how God is using Elder Aman Chuku. And, uh, and they were talking to a pastor and the pastor shared a story. Brother Gary, I think that this needs to be said where there, there was a lesbian couple. Yes, a lesbian couple who were going from church to church and they were asking the preachers, they would actually meet with the pastor, the pastor would meet with them and ask them their philosophy and their, their stand on lesbianism. And they went to multiple churches and every time they heard the pastor's stand, they went to another church because they said, well, he's not the one. And they finally, finally settled on this particular pastor. Well, what was his stand? When they asked him, this particular pastor said, we agree with the Bible. We agree with scripture. We agree with the God of the Bible. And if God says it's sin, then it's sin. Jesus loves everybody. Jesus will forgive you. But it's sin. How about this? They joined his church <laughs> and they came out of their lesbian relationship. And you know what they said? They said all of the other churches, and this is probably your church, many of you, all of the other churches waffled, made excuses, you know, said things like you hear today. Well, you know, it's not the only sin, but whoever said it was. See, this is, this is, this is where, this is when you're hearing from people who have waved the white flag of surrender. You've caved. Just admit it. Just admit it. You've caved. And you don't, you don't, and, and no, you're not preaching against that sin. I don't know. Maybe it's biological. Maybe your aunt, your nephew, your son, your daughter, somebody you like. Maybe it's your musician or your choir. Maybe it's you who have been conquered by wickedness. So you no longer cry out against wickedness. And what you're doing now is you're crying out against those who cry out against wickedness. Well, I thank God, and, and this doesn't get brought to the forefront nearly enough. And I, we get, we get, we get uh, uh, 
these quite often, and it's not mentioned how many who are locked into that lifestyle, not everybody's out there being an activist and marching and uh, uh, banging the door down for rights to be perverted. There are people who want out. There are people who want to be delivered. And they're looking for a church where the preacher will preach the Bible and the word of God. So I want to encourage every preacher out there who's standing on God's word, continue to stand on God's word. And those of you who are trying to be woke and politically correct, you know, wokeness, we don't stand against anything. We stand against nothing so that we can receive everything. So that anything goes. So that we, everything, everything goes. We stand against nothing so that everything, we can receive everything, every kind. And when they all come, you know, somebody said, the Bible says, come as you are. <laughs> I haven't read that one yet. But uh, one thing is for certain. Now, the Bible does say, whosoever will, let him come. That's, that's the Bible. But one thing is for certain. The word of God never says, stay as you are. The word of God, the word of God never says, stay as you are. You know what it says? It says, grow in grace. And the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, if you're in the same spiritual place that you were in, if you're doing the same things that you were doing five and ten years later at that church, you need a church because you're not growing. And if that preacher is not crying out against the wickedness of our times and talking about the love of Jesus Christ and preaching the doctrine of sanctification, then you need a church. Now, my time is up. My time is up. But tonight you got to join me because I'm going to talk about being effective in the church and out of the church. I'm telling you, this thing is not designed to be kept within the four walls of the church, but the glory of Christ can be seen everywhere. So join me tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for Bible study. <laughs> I don't know why I laugh every time. I chuckle. I laugh at myself. But look, we're going to study the word of the Lord together and God is going to bless you real good. Join me in person or on this medium. I just love you. Thank you for loving me. More importantly, thank you for loving Jesus. We'll see you tonight.